Welcome to ISEF Monitor's weekly news roundup, keeping you up to date with all the latest trends and developments in our sector. I'm Lucinda Bowden and here are this week's top stories. Relief efforts are mobilising in communities and campuses around the world for students and their families who are impacted by the war in Ukraine. Also this week, private partnerships for the online delivery of higher education programmes are rapidly increasing, and this market segment is projected to reach over 13 billion US dollars worldwide by 2025. And international student enrolments in Australia fell even more dramatically in 2021, but in 2020, it's due to the extended period of border closures. Don't forget to subscribe to our website, isethmonitor.com, for additional market intelligence for international student recruitment. Relief efforts are mobilising in communities and campuses around the world for students and their families who are impacted by the war in Ukraine. As the war enters its third week, there are growing reports of students who are now being cut off from evacuation routes and who are making desperate appeals for assistance. It's reported an estimated 12 to 1,500 international students are stranded in Sumy, a Ukrainian town near the Russian border. A joint statement issued by a group of Ukrainian education agents earlier this month stated, Currently, the cities that you probably visited during education fairs are being destroyed. People who you visited during your business trips live in the bomb shelters. Today, we need your help to raise awareness for preserving the future. We invite educational organisations worldwide to support Ukraine and its people. Tens of thousands of international students, many from Africa and South Asia, have struggled to find shelter or to evacuate since the Russian invasion began on the 24th of February. Some foreign governments have been scrambling to assist their students in evacuating. After criticism over its initially slow response, the Chinese government arranged several chartered flights late last week to get Chinese students out of Ukraine and back to China. American and European universities, meanwhile, have been abruptly suspending or cancelling exchange programs in Russia and advising their students to leave the country as soon as possible. In a stark warning issued by the US State Department, American citizens have been advised do not travel to Russia due to the unprovoked and unjustified attack by Russian military forces in Ukraine. The potential for harassment against US citizens by the Russian government security officials, the embassy's limited ability to assist US citizens in Russia, COVID-19 and related entry restrictions, terrorism, limited flights into and out of Russia and the arbitrary enforcement of local law. US citizens should depart Russia immediately. Any Ukrainian or Russian students currently studying abroad are also being profoundly affected by the war, and fresh financial concerns now loom over their continuing studies. With the collapse of the Russian ruble, which has so far lost half of its value, and new limits on access to foreign exchange and international banking systems, many students will struggle to access funds and pay their school fees and living expenses. Communities around the world are rallying to raise funds in relief of any affected students, and special relief measures measures are being put in place in many institutions. Meanwhile, a number of governments around the world, including the UK, Canada and Ireland, have all eased visa requirements for Ukrainians, allowing them to more easily acquire or extend visas or to exchange their visa classes. Private partnerships for the online delivery of higher education programmes are rapidly increasing in number. A recent analysis prepared by market intelligence firm Holon IQ estimates the OPM market will grow at 19% annually to reach over 13 billion US dollars worldwide by 2025. If this forecast holds true, the OPM sector will become one of the fastest growing market segments in the international education industry through the first half of this decade. OPMs help universities and colleges bring their programmes online and typically offer a broad basket of services, everything from strategic advice and instructional design to technology and systems to recruitment, retention and student support. Universities remain responsible for core academic functions, notably admissions, teaching and curriculum via such partnerships. Essentially, OPMs bring expertise and tools to the table to help institutions get their programmes online more quickly. They also bring money. Launching an online programme is expensive and typically requiring millions of dollars to move an institution through design and development phases 
and onto the point at which the programme can operate profitably. In many partnership deals, the OPM provider covers those costs and takes a significant share of the resulting tuition revenue. Speaking at a recent webinar to present the company's findings, Holon IQ co-CEO Patrick Brothers said the adoption of digital technologies, including those that support online programme delivery, is the number one challenge facing higher education institutions worldwide. And Australia's borders were closed to international students for most of 2021, which led to an even steeper fall off in enrolments than in 2020. International student numbers fell by 17% last year compared to what they were in 2020, a more dramatic decline than in 2020 when they had fallen by 7%. However, the number of visas granted to international students has increased by 34% compared with the same time frame in 2020, which is encouraging news for the year ahead. There were over 570,000 students enrolled with Australian educators in 2021 and about half of them were enrolled in higher education. The top five source countries are China, India, Nepal, Vietnam and Malaysia. And one reason for the 17% drop in 2021 is without doubt the fact that many students would have run out of the time or patience for the chance of studying in Australia after months of border closures and demand for an in-person on-campus experience has remained overwhelmingly preferred by international students everywhere. Now that borders are open again, student visa volumes are showing signs of real recovery, although not yet to pre-pandemic levels. At the end of last year, the government temporarily extended work rights for international students, offering other incentives such as visa application fee refunds until the 22nd of March to entice international students back especially those for whom affordability and the ability to work during studies are priorities. Last month, we reported that more than 50,000 students had already returned since November 2021. Well, that's your weekly news roundup from all of us here at ICEF Monitor. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest industry trends and developments in the international student recruitment sector.